think 5th edition monsters and combat encounter design kind of suck. Hey everybody, it's Nick and I take lessons from my game, things that I have learned, experiences I've had, and I give them to you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did and you can have success where I have. And today I wanna have a little bit of a rant about monsters, encounter design, things like that in fifth edition because I know for a lot of people, this is their first edition of the game and they don't know any different, they think, Monsters just work this way and they always have, and that's not really true. We see lots of conversation about rules changes and system changes and things people want in 6th edition and ideas that they have for it uh, based on previous systems or how things work in 5th edition, but I don't see a lot about monsters and monster design and counterbalance and things like that. So I don't have a solution here. There are a lot of great creators out there who are making really cool solutions, homebrews and fixes, and that's one of the things I love most about 5th edition is how hackable and fixable and tweakable and homebrewable, is that a word, homebrewable? It is. But this is not the point where I'm going to suggest here's the fix, here's how we do it. I mostly just want to reminisce about how great fourth edition was. And I know a lot of people skipped fourth edition, a lot of people heard a lot of things about fourth edition. Uh, I was a huge fan of fourth edition. Uh, I started playing D&D in 3.5, spent plenty of years playing that, and then we switched over to fourth edition. That was actually the first edition I DM'd for. And let me tell you, it was a dream to specifically run combat and build combat encounters in 4th edition. And if your only experience is 5th edition, then that might sound confusing to you because 5th edition, and I apologize to any WotC employee who might be watching this, is kind of hot garbage when it comes to monsters and encounter design specifically. I love lots of other aspects of it, but those two things are real pain points for me because they're so boring. Most monsters in 5th edition are so boring. They're big bags of hit points. You know, dragons, these pinnacle awesome creatures. Basically just big bags of hit points with claw claw bite, sometimes they can be scary, and a breath weapon that you get to use once, maybe twice. That's basically all dragons are. They're not dynamic, they're not different, they're identical based on, you know, the different sizes, but you compare young dragons, a young blue dragon, a young red dragon, you know what the difference is? Damage type, that's it. And CR is such a weird tool to try to use. I just have to do this conversion for how many players you have, and there's an XP budget, but that's not actually how much XP your players get. And because 5th edition has bounded accuracy, action economy matters so much. So if you throw your 5th level players against like a purple worm, which I think is CR 16 or something crazy, they'll actually win, which happened in one of my games. I mean, sure, a player might die, but if you throw five fifth level players against a purple worm by itself, the players will win that fight. Whereas if you take your, you know, one twentieth level person against 50 orcs, they're going to lose. Now, I understand the logic and I'm fine with that, but it's still kind of crazy to me how bonkers the design is in 5th edition, and let me share a bit about 4th edition's design to make you see what I'm talking about. In 4th edition, there's no CR calculations, there's no XP budget, there's nothing like that, because monsters are fundamentally built different than player characters. And that's sort of one of the things that 4th edition got really, really right, that they somehow reverted backwards in 5th edition on. In previous editions before 4th and now in 5th after, monsters behave much the same way as players. They've got the same kind of uh, spells and uh, uh, skills and things like that. They're proficient in the same sort of way. The math of the game, the rules of the world apply to monsters and players. Well, 4th edition sort of ignored that and said, listen, this is a game, everybody knows it's a game, let's just make monster design kind of work. So here's how they did it. To build a balanced encounter in 4th edition, you take all of the levels of the player characters, and they can be different or the same, but let's say they are four 5th level players, that is 20 player levels, right? You just have to make 20 bad guy levels. And that's it. Meaning all the monsters in 4th edition had levels to them. And so you've got like a wyvern, actually, and this is another 4th edition point, there could be like five different kinds of wyverns, but a wyvern is like a 6th or 7th or 8th level, um, you know, creature. That's just its level. And so all you had to do was pick out monsters that added up to 20. 
give or take a few levels based on how many magic items the players had, uh, how many PCs there were, how hard or easy you wanted the fight to be. There were little tweaks and guides online for, you know, plus three, you know, once you get in to this kind of player level, it has to be like plus this or minus that. And so you find little tweaks, but by and large, if you just take four fifth level players and you pick out a bunch of monsters that add up to 20 monster levels, regardless of what those things are. So like a 13th level monster and then math is hard, two fourth level uh, monsters, that's a balanced encounter. 20 first level monsters, that's a balanced encounter. An 18th level monster and a level two monster, that's a balanced encounter. And there's some give or take, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but it's not like the monstrous amount of who knows what going on in fifth edition's encounter design. The other thing is monsters were interesting. They weren't, you know, big bags of hit points with a claw claw bite or, a, you know, two great sword attacks and that's it. They had, conditional features and abilities and you know passives and auras and reactions and all kinds of things that they were doing and it often they paired well with certain things so like a group of gnolls you could take different gnolls and make them work well together. You know, you'd have the gnolls that could do this, the gnolls that could do that, and they would pair together dynamically. They would synergize in such a cool way that it made running encounters really interesting and invocative. They had these roles that they would have. There was like striker and soldier and brute and artillery and controller and skirmisher, and I might forget one. Uh, but basically, they had these roles and you could say, okay, I want to have, you know, uh, two brutes and then an artillery and like, let's spice it up. Let's do, uh, let's throw a skirmisher in there. Great. That's a really cool an encounter in, uh, in fourth edition. And you can tell if you're experienced in the system, you can tell the shape of that fight versus if you say, all right, let's throw in. Uh, a brute and a soldier and then three artillery and one controller. That's a different fight. And the shape and the feel of that fight is gonna be very different than the first one I laid out. Whereas fifth edition doesn't have that. They just have, we got ghouls and ghasts. How do they work? How are they supposed to function? We don't know, or more accurately, we do know, and we're just not gonna tell you uh, because we want to pretend this is a real world and these are just creatures. No, it's a game, they're monsters. Like, tell us how to use them so that we can create the world feeling if you just give us some help on how to set these up and run this system. Like, I don't need Wizards of the Coast to pretend that the rule books are the world, I can create the world. I want the rule books, especially the DM only rule books, like the monster manual, to tell me how to run this game. Oh, this is getting, this is getting rantier than I meant it to be. Oh man, I'm just getting all fired up. So like I said, I don't have a solution. I think there's great people doing great work out there in the homebrew monster environment. There's like action oriented monsters, Matt Colville, uh, the dungeon coach is doing great things with homebrewing monsters. I think the people over at the forum EN world are making some kind of like advanced fifth edition, but that's like an entire rule set. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do with monsters. I really hope it's something cool. Um, but yeah, I miss the days when monsters were interesting and like had cool things that they can do. Uh, I should probably throw up like comparison charts about like this is what a 5th edition monster stat block looks like and this is what a 4th edition stat block looks like. But honestly, you guys can go look up what the 4th edition stat blocks were. They were all really cool. They weren't, you know, one attack. They were, I have this cool aura and if this guy does this or I'm a wyvern, I get this flyby attack stuff. And it's just like, it's just really cool. And I've been designing encounters again in fifth edition. And basically now I just say, if I want this monster or this encounter to be interesting, I just go steal something from fourth edition. I, I fortunately have a lot of the resources for uh, fourth edition encounter design because I did DM in that system. And now I just say, I'm just gonna go use those tools and find out what was this version of this monster in fourth edition. And I just take things right from it and slap it onto my fifth edition monster because it makes it so much cooler. So again, that's my rant. I'm not trying to fix anything here and I, I don't really have advice for you other than I wanna to start to change the conversation. I want there to be 
in the zeitgeist of fifth edition DMs specifically, hey, Wizards of the Coast, as you're revising things, whenever you come out with 5.5 or sixth edition or more patches, like players got patches for, you know, racial ability scores and Tasha's and optional class features that they could swap out or add in, things like that. I want systems like that for monsters. DMs are being left out. Players get the cool stuff. I want cool stuff, guys. And that's it. Those are my thoughts. Thank you all for watching. I have no idea what the next topic will be about. Probably something from a lesson that I've learned tonight. I'm running a game for my group of evil players. And they're going to run through a maze in Foundry. I think it's going to be very cool with dynamic lighting. I actually, uh, my brother invented a very cool module to let you basically click two or three buttons, set some parameters, and it will auto-generate a maze with line of sight blocking and walls and all kinds of things like that. So it's very cool, super useful. And I was like, this is a perfect opportunity. They're going to run through a maze. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's very cool because the players will be able to hear each other on Discord, but they won't be able to see what the other people can see. They can only see what their token can see, and so I'm kind of really excited to see what happens. Does that have any relevance to the video? No, it's just something I'm really excited about, and this is my channel, so I can talk about whatever I want to. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.